It gave me, you know, the movies that I saw, and I was like, it gave me a sense of adventure. It opened my view. I wanted to know about people. I was interested in people and cultures and adventure in life. And that maybe I, it helped me to dream about things. And for me, I thought it's possible. Even if others said it's impossible, it can't happen. But I always held on to my dream thinking, no, I think it's possible, maybe, you know, and I will work towards that one day. Thank you for joining us for today's Super U Podcast. I am your host, Eric Qualman. A lot of you know me as Equal Man. Today we have a special episode. We're going to be going over seven super tips from Tom Cruise. Many of you have gone to the theater to see Top Gun Maverick. I have not seen it yet, but I'm dying to see it. But we want to see it in the theater. It's really designed for the theater. Everyone that has gone says they love it. And so we're going to see it in the theater. For those that have seen it, I'm jealous. But the original movie, if you can believe it, was 36 years ago. Hard to believe, and Tom Cruise hasn't aged a bit. But that movie had a big impact on my life, as it has for a lot of you listeners out there. For me, it was the scene of the sand volleyball. I then became obsessed with playing sand volleyball and still play it today. I love it. It's one of my favorite sports, if not my favorite sport to play, even though I played basketball in college. There weren't too many places to play sand volleyball in Michigan, but we found a couple courts. And then post, when I graduated from college, I even thought, considered very, very at length to go play on the professional tour sand volleyball out in California. But I decided to go up a little north to Silicon Valley and get in the tech space. Uh, Ironically enough, when I was at Yahoo, they had two sand volleyball courts. So we often would play sand volleyball at lunch. What is really cool about Top Gun the movies is the actors actually go into the planes. Um, I had experience doing that. We're actually going to come out with a video just showcasing that entire experience in about two minutes. Uh, I flew up with the Air Force Thunderbirds. Now, the movie Top Gun is about the Navy. In the original movie, I believe they flew F-14s. In this one, I believe they fly F-18s. The Thunderbirds, the one that I went up in, was an F-16. Um, And I'm quite tall, 6'7", so it's very kind of them. They kept calling me. You had to send in your measurements, mainly from your hip to your leg, to make sure you could clear the dash, the control panel, if you had to go into ejection mode. And I was actually an inch or two too long for that. And they kept saying, are you sure that's the right measurement? Because we're all doing it via Zoom. And finally, I got the hint and said, oh, yeah, you're right. It's it's this length. And once I was in the cockpit, I go, oh, my gosh, I hope I do not have to eject because if you did, you would lose your legs because there's that metal that you would not clear being that tall. Uh, but it was such a great experience. And Wolf, the fighter pilot that took me up, man, what the great men and women, we often take it for granted, the freedom that we have in this country. But it's because of those great young men and women that protect us, that give us that blanket of freedom. It's a reminder that freedom isn't free. And my gosh, when we're doing a turns up there, I can't imagine that you're actually in combat having to do those turns with the G's, the G-forces, because for me, I was fortunate. I did not vomit. I came close. And actually, of the cast, everyone in the cast of Top Gun actually vomited when they were up in that plane. It is quite intense. Um, And also I did not black out. A lot of people will black out. You get tunnel vision and then you black out because you don't have enough oxygen going to your brain. So you actually, when the pilot wolf in my instance would say, here comes some G's, meaning here comes some G forces, you'd have to squeeze your butt and your legs because that forces the muscles, force the blood up to your head. So it is quite intense. It It was one of the best workouts I've ever had. And it didn't 
Wolf didn't even sweat a bit. I was dripping sweat and exhausted uh, after my experience up in those F-16s. So it's a long story just to say, wow, I could not be more impressed with the young men and women at all the armed forces, but a special thanks to the Air Force Thunderbirds for taking me up in the F-16 to get a quote-unquote bird's eye view of what it means to be in Top Gun. Well, we're about to get into seven super tips and here comes my one of my Top Guns. I'm doing this at home. So Katya just walked in. Katya, just curious, have you ever heard of Tom Cruise? You know who Tom Cruise is? Yeah, he's the actor in Top Gun, I think. All right, and what's Top Gun? A movie that was made a long, long back ago when my dad was a little kid. And they have a new one out, right? Is that it? Yes. Do you want to see it? Yes. All right. Not age appropriate for you, but maybe in a couple of years, you'll be able to see it. Here are seven super tips from Tom Cruise. Bow, now, now. You have a voice as an artist. It's just getting your own confidence. Uh, and you find it just by doing it. By doing it. And when you're playing that character, that is your character. And your instincts on the character are your instincts on that character. And we're constantly looking at life. What is it? What is it? Where are we? You know, look how interesting. Look at different cultures, different beliefs. You know, how do they come to that? How do I feel about that? How do, you know, what do I think? It's, it, it is a daily adventure. You have your voice. It's there. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Create. You know, don't let anyone stop you from, from being creative. You do it. And, and that confidence will come. That's why I say, you know, people, there's no right way to do it. You know, there's no right way. You do have your voice. It's, it's there. And it's, uh, it's a matter of you just finding that confidence. As we move on to tip number two, I'm going to give some Top Gun fun facts. One is local to here is that in the new movie, Top Gun Maverick, Bad boy pilot Jake Hangman, I'm going to mispronounce this, but Saracen, is played by Austin native Glenn Paul. And he went to the University of Texas, which as you know, I live in Austin. I went to the University of Texas and I am a professor at the University of Texas. And that role was created by Cruz with Val Kilmer's Iceman character in mind. Here we are with tip number two. Sometimes I look back, I look back and, you know, I'm... Where did I get off going to New York to say that I'm going to be an actor? You know, I mean, where? But, but I think the thing that's that's really helped me is to, you know, a lot of people, when they treat failure as a personal kind of horrendous defeat, and really let life kick them pretty hard, and uh, I like to look at things and say, God, you know, I mean, if it didn't work, I want to know why didn't it work? Mm. You know, why, why didn't, you know, why didn't it work? And really, uh, you know, try to lift myself up and have the courage to really evaluate it and learn from it and say, you know, what happened? Okay, let's go. <laughs> As we move on to tip number three, did you know that Tom Cruise wasn't even the first choice to play Maverick in the original movie? It was John Travolta, uh, but he turned down the role, and then Cruise didn't even want to be in Top Gun at first. Uh, he was the first name on the list after Travolta, but he turned down the role. They turned to Patrick Swayze, Emilio Estevez, Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, Matthew Broderick, Sean Penn, Michael J. Fox, Scott Baio, and Tom Hanks, all of which showed no interest in the aviating movie blockbuster. But they eventually convinced Cruz by using the relationship between director Tony Scott and Ridley Scott, who worked with Cruz on Legend in 1985. Top Gun's based on a real flight school called U.S. Navy Fighter Weapons School, or Top Gun, formerly based at Miramar Naval Air Station in San Diego. It was moved to Fallon, Nevada in 1996 and was renamed the United States Navy Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor. <laughs> well, that's a mouthful. Top Gun's a lot easier to pronounce. You should probably just rename it Top Gun. But anytime a staffer or a pilot quotes or references the movie, the school reportedly finds them $5. So if you ever feel the need for speed, the need, if you ever feel the need, the need for speed while at the actual school, you may want to reconsider it and keep it to yourself. Otherwise, you'll be forking over some coin. Tip number three. It's still, they're still writing it. You gotta understand, all that stuff was, they'd still write it. 
they'd still talk about it. And, and the thing is, is that I still feel that I always feel I will talk about what I feel, what I want to talk about, and I won't talk about what I don't want to talk about. And it just doesn't matter. It comes down to the movie, you know? And I also feel, look, I'm living my life. And, and, and I feel, uh, man, I feel fortunate, you know? I'm, I feel really fortunate, and I'm excited. But here's the point. It's, I, don't, I don't even get into that game. I'm just living my life. It's not, it's something that, uh, I'm just living my life. And, and I'm doing the best that I can and doing it in a way that I feel is, is right. Uh, and I think that when, I like hearing good news, you know? I like hearing, you know, if something good happens to you, it's nice. I, I like sitting here talking to you. I mean, before when we were, you know, you're, you know, it's, it's, I like hearing good news from people, and it's something that I'm happy. And you know what? And I think it's, I, you know what? There's always cynics. There's, there's always has been, there always will be. I, I have never worried about what other people think and what other people say. In the original movie, though it's never mentioned in the movie, the MiGs are basically the Russians because they're flying MiG fighters. And the U.S. at the time, as you know, was in the midst of the Cold War when that movie came out in 1986. And as a cheeky joke, a, a group of Top Gun instructors actually sent a group photo to the Soviet Air Force with the greeting, thinking of you and yours at this joyful Yuletide season. Trust all is well and cozy at your fireside. If our nations ever pair off in war, or check your six o'clock. We'll be there hosing you. Well, glad both sides were able to joke around a little bit during a very tense time. And here's no joking around. We're moving on to tip number four. I remember as a kid, I remember I was, I was four years old and I wanted to make movies and I wanted to fly airplanes and I thought about my life and I, I wanted to have an adventure in my life. And I was always a kid that was doing wild things, climbing the tallest trees, and I was very much a dreamer, and constantly writing stories, and as a kid I would write characters, and I had, you know, when I grew up I had jobs, not in the movie business, but I had to have jobs as a kid, not had to, but I, I also, we contributed to the family, but I cut grass, you know, shoveled snow, and I would sell, you know, I don't know if you have that here, but I'd sell cards door to door, you know, at that time, like, Christmas cards, or seasonal cards, and I'd save my money and I'd go to the movies, I'd give a little money to the family and I'd go to the movies, give a little money, go to the movies. And suddenly I'm 18 years old and we traveled around a little bit when I was growing up uh, and suddenly I'm making taps. And I realized like this is happening, I'm on a movie set for the first time, I'm 18 years old and it was really my second film audition, and I got the role, a very small role. And I just thought, I, w I never went to film school, but I knew movies as a kid. So I knew who Owen Roisman was. I knew who Stanley Jaffe was, Harold Becker. Obviously, we were working with Timothy Hutton and that incredible performance, Ordinary People at the time. And what I did was, is I went to every single department, and I studied every single department. Because I thought, if I never get to make another movie again, I want to understand what it is. And I was, I was a kind of kid, I was always kind of wrote goals on the wall of like, what kind of movies I liked or what I wanted my life to be. And I would work towards those goals. So I knew that I, I went to every department and I just started studying everything. The cinematography, I was there in the trailer and bugging people. And I was there every, every aspect of the film. I would just go and study and study and study. And really that's... That has been my education throughout in terms of educating myself, and I've been fortunate to have worked with some very generous people uh, from all walks of life who have shared their work with me, their craft with me, so that I could learn and kind of understand what it is for myself. Because I'm, I'm someone, if it's not, like, if, if I don't get it, I kind of, I'm not afraid to say I don't know something. And I've always been not afraid to not know something. And, but really work hard to try to understand it. It's hard to believe now, but in 1981, the sunglasses company Ray-Ban was in trouble, significant trouble. And the now ubiquitous Wayfarer 
sunglasses. They only sold 18,000 models that year. But as it turns out, with the help of a little product placement paid for by Ray-Ban, Cruz single-handedly saved the entire business. They're prominent in locations such as the cameos in Cruz's films, Risky Business, Top Gun, and also Rain Man. In fact, obviously this show's about Top Gun. The year Top Gun was released in 1986, Ray-Ban enjoyed a 40%, that's right, you heard me, 40% increase in sales. Here's to us increasing our courage to be that superhero. Remember, we just need that, that courage to wear the cape, but here we are with tip number five. <laughs> I always go to movies when they come out at, in the screen. I'll put my cap on and I'll sit in the audience with everyone. You know, I'll come in. I want to see the trailers. I want to see where we are. I've spent a lot of time with theater owners, you know, with, you know, in every aspect of, of movies. When I started studying movies, I also went in each department, whether it was the agencies, the studio. I want to at least understand their jobs so that I could help them with their jobs. So that I always thought if I make a movie and I realize if the movie does well, they're going to let me go do it again. You know, they're going to. And so and every time I was like, how do I push this format? How do I also learn? I, everything was like, I want to learn everything that I possibly can. You know, and I listen, I, I go to the th cinema and those people there that are serving the popcorn that are making these theaters. And I was calling them saying, please. I know what you're going through. Just know we are making Mission Impossible. Top Gun is coming out. And I promise you, it's like when I'm making a movie, I'm thinking, I'm trying to use all of the skill and everything that I know and all of the skill of all the people that I work with, the beauty of cinema. I mean, it's, a, it's an incredible experience because you just learn so much about humanity, about people, about work, about art, and every department. When I started out, like how every element of a film is so important and how you have to create an environment that is conducive to fulfilling the potential of a story. And it's, you know, some people they think, oh, well, you write the script and you committed to the script you're doing. It's like, actually, there's, I work on things for years, years. You know, Jerry Maguire, we worked on that for a full year. And even when you're making it, you're constantly evolving and you're discovering what it is. You know, and I started to produce movies really out of necessity to be able to push things that I wanted to do, to be able to support in the way that I wanted to support. And it's ever evolving. And, uh, that's the beauty of it. You know, you're sometimes you just, you really think you know what you're doing and you just realize I just made, I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's humbling and it's, it's magnificent in so many ways. As we move along to tip number six, did you know that Cruz was offered the role of Iron Man before they offered it to Robert Downey Jr. Uh, so that's right, Cruz could have been Iron Man. That's a great episode, by the way. It's one of our most popular episodes is the one with Robert Downey Jr. So feel free to go check out that Super U podcast with Robert Downey Jr. But right now what we're doing is we're checking out tip number six. It gave me, you know, the movies that I saw, and I was like, it gave me a sense of adventure. It opened my view. I wanted to know about people. I was interested in people and cultures and adventure in life. And that maybe I, it helped me to dream about things. And for me, I thought it's possible. Even if others said it's impossible, it can't happen. But I always held on to my dream thinking, no, I think it's possible, maybe, you know, and I will work towards that one day, and I will try. And I think one of the most important things when I'm working with actors, that it is better to create. And even if you're, you fail on some degree, I always tried to walk away with what I learned, even in something that necessarily, it's always better to go for it. It's always better to try than to, than to not do it. It's always better to ask the question and don't be afraid. And if someone says you're really, or looks at you like you're really stupid or you're really dumb or arrogant for asking this, you know, and I have a rule with everyone. I said, please, you can ask anything with on the movie. Please, please, I expect you to contribute, you know, 
And I never make less of someone for that because I've lived through those times where people are roll their eyes. And I realized it's really interesting because I was going around, I'd ask these questions, and you could always see the ones that were very competent and capable at what they did. They'd give you an honest answer, like, I don't know, or this, or take a look at this. Uh, what do you think? And a lot of times the ones that were arrogant about it, they really didn't know so much. They're the ones that uh, a lot of times didn't quite know as much. And so that's what I, what I say to people and what I do and what I, I know, you know. And it's, I give my, my life to these and I, because I feel privileged to do what I do. As we move on to tip number seven, obviously Cruz has been offered many, many times to become an action figure, a figurine itself, but he refuses to do so. Since the beginning of action movie days, Cruz has repeatedly denied requests for his likeness to be made into video games and or action figures. So sorry, but Mission Impossible's Ethan Hunt will not be showing up on your PlayStation anytime soon. Here we are with tip number seven. Think about that, and we talk about that. And I'm, for me, it's, it's. I'm thinking for future always. You know, I'm thinking what's the next, and what's the next. And one of the things that we do is I do spend time with the crew, working with them and trying to help them in any way that I can, help them so that they can, you know, carry carry that on. So I'm always I'm always helping different filmmakers, writers, directors, and and they help me. You know, I I I I'm not sitting here saying I know everything. I know certain things that have worked and I've, and I know kind of where, what we, what we need to set the table to potentially create something that's very special for all of us that an audience will connect with. But we all have to contribute to that. There's no, unfortunately, one of the things in, in Hollywood, the people, they want guarantees. You know, everyone wants a guarantee. It's like, I can, I can tell you how I can create a, an environment where like the soil that will that we can plant the seeds that we will hopefully create a beautiful flower that one day someone will come and appreciate the flower that we grew for them you know and that's what we hope to do and, that, and I'm available to if anyone wants it I'm like listen or don't listen whatever you want and I'm here to learn also Well, this is your host, Eric Quam, and I love you know me as Equal. Man, I hope this episode took your breath away. That's right. I went there. I went Berlin. They're the singers of Take My Breath Away. Watching in slow motion as you turn around and say, this podcast deserves a five-star review. No, all kidding aside, I hope this podcast, like all of them, helps unlock and unleash the superpower that's within all of us. All of us are superheroes. We just need that courage to wear the cape. So until next time, this is Eric Qualman, and feel free, Jake, and also Maritza, to give us a little take my breath away. Until next time, this is Eric Qualman, and on behalf of all the great producers here, Maritza Gutierrez, Jake Brin, and also Kelsey Gomez, I hope that the world is taking your breath away in... Until next time, this is Eric Qualman reminding all of us, it's not what we take from the world, it's what we leave behind. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Super, 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 super. Super you. Ah!